All right, guys, today I'm going to show you how to make one of these Wago 2 power pole connectors. Uh, pretty simple build. Um, basically, you're just going to be using uh, about a uh, one and three quarter inch piece of enameled copper wire. This is uh, 14 gauge, I believe. And that'll work just fine for the Wago 221s that I'm using. They'll accept anywhere between uh, 12 to 18 gauge and you want at least 11 millimeters of uh, your exposed wire in here. Um, that's 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 the optimal length. You don't want any uh, any less than 11 millimeters. And uh, basically, so the components you'll need is some good four to one heat shrink, uh, four to one shrink ratio. Uh, something adhesive lined is very critical. If you do not have this, I recommend ordering a, uh, uh, a set of some um, uh, various uh, sizes. Uh, you can get that on Amazon and I can link it uh, for you. So we got our heat shrink. We've got our magnet wire here, co enameled copper magnet wire. We've got our power pole housings. Now these are non-OEM power pole housings and I'm only using them for this demonstration um, because these are not a permanent uh, solution. You could use them as a permanent solution, uh, but if you did, I would suggest using OEM power poles. Do not skimp on something that's gonna be in your shack. Um, these have been fine so far in my testing. Uh, but I do not recommend them. Uh, I just can't in uh, good faith say that these are going to last and hold up like an original uh, power pole. I'm using a Win rotary tool and you don't have to, to go this far. You can use sandpaper, uh, a file, whatever you got, a bench grinder. Uh, you just don't want to remove a whole lot of the metal here. That's the key. Um, we want to expose. We're going to crimp our power pole side first. Uh, and we're going to crimp and solder. I always crimp and solder, especially on these cheaper connectors. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll use the wind rotary tool here and we'll crank this thing up to, to 10,000 RPM and, and straighten these out, your your magnet wire. Try to straighten it out as much as you can to where it'll roll. You know, you want it to be fairly straight. You don't want it to be kind of all wobbly and zigzagged and all that mess. So anyway, we'll go ahead and get started here. We'll take our rotary tool and we will just start sanding. And it makes pretty quick work of this without removing a whole lot of the metal, which I uh, really appreciate and enjoy, especially making a uh, quantity of these. I usually make about uh, five or six of these at a time uh, to hand out or give to fellow hams and friends uh, that use uh, solar and ham radio and all that kind of jazz. But anyway, just be sure you've got this ex this uh, bare wire exposed. You'll see some real shiny, pretty copper there. And it uh, that side looks pretty good to me. And that's about 11 millimeters, uh, which is probably a little long for your power pole housing. Uh, but just eyeball it. All right, now you should look something like this. And what I like to do is I like to take a little bit of uh, a little bit of liquid flux. We'll do one at a time here. Go ahead and grab your power pole connector. Get that in place and you can see that's that's pretty decent as far as the length we ground down. Go ahead and put a little bit of tension on the crimp. Grab our wire. We'll go ahead and put it in and give it some tension. And there we go. So that is perfectly crimped. Go ahead and straighten that out and make sure that looks totally straight. And it does. Go ahead and grab. I'm using this uh, as helping hands. You can actually use your helping hands. You don't have to use pliers or whatever. Basically, all I'm doing is using these pliers as a heat sink. And what I'll do, I'll put this in my 3D printed PCB. Grab our soldering iron. 
and we'll go ahead and plug it in. This is a Finerci FS01. Uh, you can find this on n1rip.com. A link to it. Uh, HS Hotel Sierra 01. Forgive me. Uh, these have been perfect for every project I have used. Amazing irons. They take uh, uh, these uh, this style of uh, heater heater cartridge uh, with these nice tips. These are very high quality. Uh, very similar uh, to the uh, the Hakko uh, style. I forget which ones they are. T12s or something like that. PS12 something. So we plug that into our USB-C power supply, power delivery. Go ahead and turn this thing on. And this thing it heats from dead cold to 300 degrees in about eight seconds. And we're at 300. So we're ready to solder. Tin the tip, just like that. Your iron is hot and ready. Look at that. All right, one down. So we'll put our iron over there on the stand. And Bob's your uncle. So now we can take one of our housings and go ahead and connect it. Here's our negative. There we go. And make sure it's centered up pretty good. And we need at least 11 millimeters uh, to make this connection. If you're any less than 11, it will not work. So you need to be sure you've got 11 millimeters here. So what I like to do is I'll just get an idea here of what the uh, the length is right about there. And cut on the outside of your mark because we're just doing some testing here. Cut on the outside of your mark, open up your Wago. Stick it in, make sure it looks good and that looks good. You can actually see the magnet wire right there. And let's just go ahead and press these two together. Keep keep pressure on it and close the Wago. And you just want to make sure that, that that's stuck on there pretty good. And that is perfect. As is, this will not work because of the enamel coating on this wire. If you're using solid copper wire with no enamel, that that's all you have to do right there you could that's your connection but since we are using this we're gonna have to sand this coating off uh to be able to be sure that this actually makes a, a good connection about 11 millimeters All right, so Wago goes back on. And now you want your connector housing facing up your power pole, you know, like that orientation. Wago, press them on, press them together as tightly as you can. And there you go. And when we put the heat shrink on there, this becomes one unit. I mean, this, it, it becomes rock hard. I mean, you know, you, you, you can't really flex this stuff if you've got good quality heat shrink with good adhesive. All right, so that side's done and we will go ahead and let's use this as a template here. So we'll mark it about right there.
So here's our multimeter. Let's move that solder out of the way. All right, so now we're gonna set this to continuity. So basically, we just want to test continuity between the Wago and the power pole. And we've got it. As you can see on the multimeter there, and you probably won't hear the beeps because of the uh, audio. Cut it as straight as you can. Factory edge on the power pole side. And that looks perfect right there. Yep, that'll be perfect once we heat shrink it. Once we put the heat to it. Line that up to where you're directly on the line. Factory edge on the, on the line there. And then what I like to do is I'll take some pliers. These are the Doyle tweezer, tweezer tip pliers from Harbor Freight. And these are the most used pliers on my bench. I have used these for, for years um, and they are fantastic. $7.99, uh, $7.99 for a million dollars worth of uh, worth of utility. So just stick uh, your pliers inside your Wago. Be sure you look good here. And I have a silicone mat here. Turn our heat gun on. And now this is going to be hot and do not touch that adhesive because it will burn the shit out of you. And that's essentially all there is to it. I mean, literally, that's it. Nothing to it. Very easy. Don't buy these online. Build them yourself. Save some money. It's a fun project. Uh, if you've got kids or anybody new to soldering uh, or anything like that or electronics projects, this is a very easy one to get them involved with and that they can see the utility of right away. Uh, if you've got like an external radio to power uh, or something like that. Uh, but anyway, that's it. You're, you're ready to rock. I mean, you can even use these, you know, in series to, to connect two, two wired things together, you know, to, uh, to expose the positive and negatives. Uh, just be sure to check your polarity uh, you know, that's that's the big thing with Wagos. That's it. Enjoy.